In this video, I show how you can calculate the dependent variable y from a straight line equation y equals mx plus c. This equation will give us a straight line graph. What I'd like to do is to introduce some terminologies that we can use for the rest of this video. If we consider the equation, we know that y is going to be calculated for all of the different values of x we choose. Now, under these circumstances, x is regarded as the independent variable. We choose what values of x we want, because they're the values that are going to go along the x-axis, and we calculate what the values of y will be. Now, y is therefore regarded as the dependent variable, because its value will be dependent upon the value of x. So the two words I want you to take forward are shown here, independent and dependent. X is the numbers we choose to go along the x-axis, so we regard those as being independent. And Y, well, they're calculated based upon the values of X we choose. So Y, as I've already said, is the dependent variable. So here you can see I've shown part of the program we've seen in the previous video and we set up x and y to be the literal values and then I print out x and y and when this executes what we should see is the following. We can see that these are the values stored in the list x and these are the values that are stored in the list y. And these two statements have printed these out. What I'm now going to do is to show you another way of getting the values put into y. And that is shown here. And you can see x, I've chosen that to be 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 again. They're the independent values. And y here, well that's going to be the Python list that's going to store the calculated values. And what this line has done is create an empty list, list with no items in it. Now what I've got to do is to fill it up with values that are based upon the items that are in the Python list x, i.e. these, not 1, 2, 3 and 4. And I'm going to achieve that using a for loop, as you can see here, which says for i in x. Now i is an abbreviation that I always use for item. So I like to read for i in x as for each i in x for each item in x and what will happen i will go and i'll get the first item which is zero and i takes up the value of zero so this here is zero which is being multiplied by two to give zero but then one's added to it to give one and we append that value of one to y so this list now has now got one item in which is one and I'm showing that below, as you can see. Y is now got within it one item. And that one item, in this case, is one because it's been based on the value of X when X was zero. Of course, because this is a loop, we go around the loop again. And on this occasion, I picks up the next item in the X list, which is one. So this is one. Multiplied by 2 to give 2, plus 1 is 3. So 3 is now appended to y, and I'm showing that below. So now we can see that y has got 1 and 3 in it. Now we go round the loop again, and this time we pick up the 2. This therefore becomes 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 is 5. So then we append that 5 to y, and you can see below that y has now got within it 1, 3, 5. I then go round the loop again. On this occasion, I pick up the 3. So this is 3. So this is 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. So 7 is now appended to y, and you can see I'm showing that below. Now, of course, what's going to happen, we're going to go round the loop again. So we pick up 4 this time. This becomes 2 times 4, plus 1 is 9. And 9 is appended to y, so you can see below, we now get y and y contains 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Now, y values were dependent upon the values of x. So here, x is independent because I've chosen these, but you can see we've calculated them using the for loop for y. And that calculation was dependent upon the values that are stored in x. 
So we can now see that the program will print X and Y, and when we look towards the output that I'm going to show appearing below, you can see that X is what you would expect it to be, as I've defined here. It's got 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you look at Y, which here was empty, you can see after I've done this loop, we print Y. It does indeed contain 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So if you look at both outputs, you can see they're identical. The difference is here, I typed in what I knew the values of Y were going to be, whereas here, I had to create an empty list for Y, and then I calculated what each entry in the list would be using this for loop and using this formula here, which is effectively 2 times i plus 1, which is really 2 times x plus 1. I've just chosen i to be the name for the item within the list x. So if we consider this program, which is the one we looked at in the last video, and what I type in the literal values for x and y, as you can see here, and then I plot passing in x and y, and then I show the figure, what you're going to see as the output from this computer program is the following. And there you can see we have the straight line graph with the x and y coordinates marked off appropriately. Here you can see the second program that I've introduced you to in this video. And look here and you can see that I've created the independent values. In other words, I've created the list x. Here I've created an empty list. Here I've gone round a loop calculating what the values of y for all of the independent values of x. So this will be calculating the dependent values that will be stored in the list y through this append. And then I plot x, y, where x and y are the lists. X is obviously this list, and Y is obviously the list that's being calculated by this loop. And then, of course, we show the figure. So if we look at what we will get as an output from this, we will get this. And you can see it's exactly the same as the output we've just seen from the previous program. Earlier in the playlist, I outlined why you should not really use lists when you're plotting graphs. Python lists are useful. But when we come on to using PyPlot, it's better when you're passing in the X and Y coordinates here that we don't use Python lists, we use NumPy arrays. NumPy arrays can be processed much quicker because of the way in which they're internally stored, as well as other issues to do with advances in central processing unit architecture. But what you can see here is I've created a list of independent variables. Here I've created an empty list. Here I've calculated what goes in there. But I've done all of that, as I've already said, using Python list, which is not recommended. So the next video is going to revisit this, where we still have independent values, and we still calculate what Y is going to be, but we don't do it using Python lists. We do so using NumPy, or if you prefer, this pronunciation numpy arrays. So here you can see we've used lists, and now I'm going to show you a way in which you can do this using numpy arrays. And you will find that you do not have to create an empty list as shown here, and you do not have to go around a for loop as used here. It's a little bit more sophisticated when you use numpy arrays. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.